Whilst using matcap, I had one of those intrusive thoughts. Can I have one on each separate object? It turns out, yes, yes you can. However, if you've never tried out a matte cap before, if we go back to the viewport shading area at the very top and click solid shaded, if you go to this drop down, you'll be able to see matte cap as one of the options. Now, if we select that, we can see it changes straight away and you can have all of these various material captures and they're great for visualizing your models. However, you can only have one that covers the entire scene. What we want to be able to do is go ahead and assign a matte cap to each individual object or perhaps even each individual surface. And at the end of the video, we'll even go ahead and create an asset that you can use in all of your Blender files. So what is a matte cap? Well, it's short for material capture and it's a form of optimization. Now, what it does is it captures both the surface and the lighting conditions at the same time, and you can just apply it to models incredibly quickly. It's often used for pre-visualization. You'll often see someone using this if they're sculpting or creating a hard surface model where you need to see perfect reflections. And what this does is it saves you a ton of time having to set up perfect lighting conditions so you can render your models and see if the lighting and everything is correct. They're nice and fast as well, and they've got a wonderful stylistic look. Now we will be creating the shader node setup ourselves over in Blender. However, if you want to, you can go ahead and download my Blender helper asset, which you can just use straight away. First of all, we need to find out where these matte caps are. And I'm quickly going to cover the standard installation and if you installed Blender using Steam. Okay, so on Windows, if you've done a standard installation, you'll find it on your C drive and then under Program Files, Blender Foundation. If you've got a couple of versions, you'll find the different versions there. And then we can go into 4.1, data files, studio lights, and we've got matte cap. We can copy all of those over to the desktop. Now, if you've installed with Steam, you can go to your library. Under your library, you'll need to find Blender, right click on it and go to properties. Once you're there, you can go to installed files and then click the browse button. Once you've clicked on that, it will open up. And once again, you may have different versions, but you can go to 4.1 in this case data files studio lights mac cap and you can copy this lot over to your desktop so on mac os if you've done a standard installation what you'll want to do is go to finder once finder has appeared go to your applications folder right click on the version of blender that you are using you probably only have one there and go to show package contents once you've done that you just need to navigate down into contents resources 4.1 in this instance, if you're in the future, 4.2, 3, etc. We go into data files, studio lights, and we go to Mac Cap, and we can see all of those right there. I would suggest for the purposes of this, if you're following along, then go and copy these to your desktop. Now with Steam, it's a very similar process. First of all, launch Steam, right click on Blender, go to properties, and then go to installed files. Then you can click browse, saves lots of navigation. And just the same as before, we're gonna right click on this show package and just navigate through this until we get to the appropriate locations or resources. There we can see multiple versions of Blender. And then we can go into here, data files, studio lights, matte cap, and there we go. We can copy those to the desktop. Of course, you can add them here as well, but I would suggest doing that within Blender itself if you're adding new matte caps. Okay, so that's all sorted. Now, do let me know down in the comments if you want a more in-depth look at matte caps or even how to create your own. Now, let's go ahead. I'm going to create a brand new file here. I'm not going to save what I've done so far. We're going to have Suzanne the monkey because I think she looks the best for this type of show off. And whilst I'm here, I'm going to press Control and 5 and make her super smooth. Right click and shade smooth. Then we're not going to have any uh, faceting on the surface. Now we need to jump straight over into our shading workspace. We can see here she's not got a material on her. I'm going to select the default one that comes along with Blender. Now we don't need too much space here, but what we need to do is load in the textures themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and type in image and that we want a color. Let's go ahead and open up an image. Let's go to my desktop, matte caps. If I go to the thumbnail view here, we can see we've got lots of different ones. Now I'm going to pick the, oh, the car paint. I really do like that one. Now, of course, at the moment, it's being applied with UV mapping, which is not what we want. We need to actually transform 
what's going on because this is basically as you saw a moment ago let's just reopen that for a second this is what the image looks like it's a 2d map that we need to project onto at least half of a sphere and we need to do a bit of transforming to do that so let's go back in here out of this vector we're going to plug it into first a texture coordinate so i'm just going to type in coordinate and we're going to plug it into the normal plug it already looks pretty awesome but we're nowhere near there yet so we need to take that and we need to do a transform a vector transform so i'm going to search for you can probably see that i've already searched for it before so it's at the top of the list but if you search for a vector transform what we're going to do is we're going to take it um, from the normals so we need to use the normals first and we're going to take it from the object to the camera now there's a tiny bit of remapping that we need to do because at the moment we'll be looking at the lower part of this image and what we need to do is we need to move it to the center and this is quite a common thing whenever you're playing with images uh, we're going to do mapping in this case so i don't have to do a ton of vector math going through but we basically need to move the x and the y by 0.5 and then we need to move the scale by 0.5 as well and there we go have a look at that let's just compare it because that looks very very similar to let's go to matte cap car paint here look at that now it does look different and it will look different because we are rendering our object not just using the matte cap and in this particular case, we can even shade it with Eevee. And this is even better. We've got a bit of baked in lighting there, so you do have to bear that in mind. However, now that we've done this, we can incorporate other render effects and also just incorporate into our usual workflow with some really cool stylized effects. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this so we can use it everywhere else. This is the area that we want to keep. Unfortunately, I would love to, but you cannot, as it is at the moment, put a texture image node into a node group. So it's just going to be this control and G to pop it in a node group. So I'm going to name it and I'm going to rename it twice. In this case, this node here, I'm going to right click and rename and I'm going to call it matte cap. And then finally, where it says node group inside, I'm also going to call it matte cap. OK, so finally, let's go ahead and create ourselves our asset. Now, if we change this view here to an asset browser, we won't see anything but the ones that come with Blender. What we are going to do is we're going to add to the unassigned. Now, the easiest way to do that when you've created a shader node group is to come to the outliner on the right hand side, change the view type to a blender file then you can scroll down find your node group right click on it and mark it as an asset it should now appear over here in unassigned once you've done that what you can do is you can go ahead and click on it and pressing n to bring up this properties panel we can go ahead and load a custom image and for this i'm going to use the one that i always go to Let me change the view type here car paint there you go we've got an icon for it and that is pretty much done. Now we do need to make sure we can use this in other files as well. So what we're going to go ahead and do is go and save this file. And this is where you'll add your things in the future as asset helper for the moment. I might change the name of that and you might see a different name when you have it. But then finally, what I can do is under edit and preferences is where we have our file paths under asset library here what i'm going to go ahead and do is add my custom assets so once again they were on the desktop mac caps asset helper dot blend add asset library and then when we go ahead and create a new blend file and i'm going to go straight to the shading workspace here just to test it we can go ahead add in our monkey make sure that we've got it nice and shaded now i don't have the asset browser open so let's go ahead and open it and we should find is our mac cap so if we go ahead and create a material and drop that straight in it's ready to use and what we can do here is we can pop in our image texture and then finally link those up and we can load in a brand new mac cap just in order to test it gonna load in the green one there we go that looks pretty awesome now the asset browser is an absolutely phenomenal way of keeping all of your stuff together and being able to apply it into new blend files in the future and to find out more about that check out this video right here